Arise, champion! This is the world famous Steve Weatherford Show, where each week we bring you stories, messages, and guests to create massive breakthroughs in your life. Somebody say greatness! This show has been strategically designed to accelerate you. Call a friend and tell him Steve Weatherford is home. What's up, champions? Welcome back to another episode of the Steve Weatherford Show. And today I want to share with you the three ways that you can supernaturally supercharge your morning routine. And it might not be the way that you think. Um, I've seen so much content out there about the millionaire morning. And I've actually had a lot of friends who have written books and built brands off of what to do on your morning routine. And, and I've tried a lot of them. I've read a lot of books. I've I've done everything from like wake up at 4 a.m. and jump in a cold plunge to um, and so many different ways of, of starting my day. And what I've learned is the difference between athletes that win the champion sh- championship and athletes that don't are athletes that lose their focus and let me say this a different way champions are champions because they stayed focused longest so when we're starting our day i ask myself how can i get maximally focused and how can i stay maximally focused and so what i'm going to share with you is based upon a lot of experiences And trying things a lot of different ways. And some of those tactics worked well. And some of those tactics didn't work well. And I also went through a season of my life where I thought my value was predicated off of how much I earned that day, that week, or that year. It was predicated off of how much influence I had. It was predicated off of so many different measurables that were outside of myself. And I found myself. And I'm believing a lot of people will connect with this. I found myself... At the end of the day, measuring myself based upon what the scoreboard says. And I had to do some real internal work. And I had to redefine who I wanted to be. And I also had to accept who God says that I am. And so I did some identity work. And through that identity work, I really got to a much deeper level of focus. Not just focus to get things done, but focus to become something. And so the three things that I'm going to share with you are very clear, they're very simple, they're very concise to say, but to do them consistently, to to stack brick on brick, that really takes some discipline and that really takes some faithfulness. And so the first thing that I want you to do to supernaturally supercharge your morning is I want you to find, create, or go to a secret place. If you've already got a secret place, if you've already got a place where, where you sit, sit down and, and you read the word of God and you, you get away from your kids and, and it's a, a quiet, it's a private place. That's awesome. But most of us, and my, myself included up until about a year ago, I didn't necessarily see the importance or I didn't necessarily have the square footage to have a secret place. And so I found myself needing to get up early and to go into my closet and I just, just set up just a, a simple chair that was comfortable for me. And I began to, to spend time there. And then I learned that, man, you know what? I'm going to rearrange some things and I'm going to make my secret place. For me personally, my secret place isn't this office. My secret place isn't my closet. My secret place is the bathtub. But the reason it's a secret place is because when I go to that secret place, it's very early in the morning. And so the first key to supernaturally supercharge your morning is to find a secret place and to go to that secret place. And the second step is very simple. To, for you to supernaturally supercharge your morning is to be still with God. And I shared with you earlier that I got caught up in the hamster wheel of I'm not valuable unless I achieve. I'm not valuable unless I earn. I'm not valuable unless things increase. And so I would always wake up 
almost with like an anxiety of everything that I needed to do or the needles that I needed to push forward every single morning because I'm hearing all these different expert gurus talking about getting up at at 3.30 and 4 a.m. and how that's the solution to all your problems. And here's the deal. I'm from the Midwest. I'm from the Indiana. Anybody that was like successful that lived around me got up way before the sun came up and they came home way after the sun went down. They were grinders. They exchanged their time for money and if they exchanged enough of it, their truck could get paid off, their house could get paid off, and their family could live in some type of, of abundance. But since I've been on this journey and I've had this radical encounter with God four years and eight months ago, I've realized and, and learning from some different mentors that I actually need to be still with God in that secret place the very first thing in the morning. And so I draw a warm bath. I get into that warm bath and I give God my first fruit. We've, we've heard in scripture, right? We heard of people say like, oh, you got to give God your first fruit. And 99% of us, when we hear that, we think finances. And that's absolutely part of what first fruit means. And it's really the most difficult part of following Christ is honoring that commandment. Like that's really tough. It's very hard for me growing up in the Midwest and stepping into the NFL and making more money than I've ever seen. And the thought of cutting a 10% check of that and just giving it away. I was thinking to myself, I can't do that. But being still with God and giving him your first fruit actually means give him the first of everything. And so when I wake up in the morning, I give him my first praise. And that's one of the, the ways that's like the, the key to get into dad's bedroom. Our Abba father is praise. It says in scripture to come into his, his presence with thanksgiving and praise. Right. So that's like the password. You and I are at dad's door and we want to get in and we want to converse with him in order to get into his presence. Man, just tell God how good he is. Tell God how much you love him. Tell God how faithful of a father he is. That's your that's your code to get the door unlocked. And when you step into his presence, you can give him your first fruit being also your first worry. Right. Give him your first doubt. Give him your first anxiety. And when we do that, the first thing in the morning, instead of letting our schedule get on us, we get into God, and then we get into our schedule. And I feel like for me, step two is so, so important because of how I grew up. I'm an athlete, right? And as an athlete, if you want to go grow stronger or become bigger, you pay your price. But sometimes God wants to grow our strength, grow our endurance, but he wants to do that when we're being still because that's how God's power is made known through our life. Because if we were the ones with our hand on the plow doing the work, how would God get the glory? So step number two to supernaturally supercharge your morning is to be still with God. And number three, number three, this is, the, this is one of the X factors, man. Step one is important, having a, a, a secret place and being consistent at the place and the time. But step two and three, this is what's really going to, it's going to supercharge you. And step three is carb up. I'm going to say that again. Carb up. What does an athlete do before a competition? Doesn't eat a bunch of sugar. Doesn't eat a bunch of sweets. He eats carbohydrates. Because carbohydrates gives, gives an athlete or a soldier the energy needed to train, the energy needed to compete, the energy needed to push the envelope and get the job done and accomplish the goal. And what I mean when I say to carb up while you're being still with God, what does that mean? That means daily bread. A lot of us have heard your daily bread. Well, what what exactly is your daily bread? Well, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share a prayer. And this is a prayer that you've heard before and you've probably said before, but I want to kind of explain to you what it means a little bit. And then we're going to pray together. And in that prayer, it says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know what we just did there? We just identified who our Father was. And we said, hallowed be thy name, a.k.a. that's praise and worship. So that's the code word to get into his presence, right? Your kingdom come, your will be done. That, that's us saying, 
God, we want what you want to happen, not what I want to happen. On earth as it is, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. AKA, it says, God, give me the energy. Give me the, give me, give me the strength. Give me the courage. Give me the righteousness. Give me the joy. Give me the peace. Give me the perseverance. Give me the discipline and the self-control that I need today. And forgive me of my sins. The next part says, and forgive me of my trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's part of your daily bread. It's like, God, forgive me so I can forgive other people. And lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. That's like, God, don't lead me astray. God, just keep me on the righteous path. Because thine is the kingdom and the, the power and the glory forever and ever. A.K.A., it's all about you, God. Amen. That's what carving up is. And that's just a consistent way. And sometimes if, if all you do is pray that prayer, I, I feel personally that it becomes a little bit ritualistic. Like it's just something that I need to check off the box. And sometimes you and I need to go off script when we carve up. And we don't need to just read something or recite something. We need to cry out to God and say, God, I've made mistakes. God, I acknowledge that you are number one. God, you're Jehovah Jireh. You're Jehovah Nisi. So God, I submit to you. You are number one. God, I've made mistakes and I've sinned. God, would you forgive me? And would you give me the strength to forgive other people? God, I want your plans to happen and not my own plans. I want your kingdom to come and not my own. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. Sometimes I go off script a little bit. Most of all of the times I go off script because you supernaturally supercharge in your morning isn't about you checking boxes. It's not about a religion. Jesus didn't die on a cross. He didn't live a perfect life, die on the cross. Just so you and you and I could wake up and, and be forgiven. He did those things so we could have purpose. Forgiveness, purpose, freedom, authority. And so I'm just praying and believing that as you're listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube, you're going to take these three steps. Very simple. Go to your secret place. Be still with God and carb up. Because I'm praying and believing that God wants to do in you and through you the same thing he's doing in, in me and through me and my family. Five years ago, hear me when I say this, I was putting drugs up my nose. Everything on paper said that my life was perfect. And I had everything that the world had to offer to tell you you would be happy. But I had a God-sized hole inside of me. And the only thing that could give me what I needed for the day, for the morning, for the week, for the month, for my life was God. Because if when I went to winning, it was never as good as what I thought it would be. When I went to money, it was never as good as I thought that it would be. When I went to women, there was shame and there was guilt. When it was porn, when it was pills, everything turned back void. And then when I experienced God for the first time, it was the first thing. And the only thing that I've experienced in my life is every time that I go back to it, it gets better and better and better. The first time I, I did drugs, it was never as good the second, third, fourth time. But God is different. God is faithful. So thank you for listening to the Steve Weatherford Show. I, I hope and pray and believe that this will bless you. Uh, don't forget to share this podcast with somebody that it may serve and speak to. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, hit the notifications because we come out with a podcast every single Wednesday. And the other thing that I wanted to share with you, if you want more free leadership, mindset, business, and performance content or training courses, I've actually created one absolutely free for you. I call it the 12 Disciplines of a Pro. And this is great for men and women. It's great for entrepreneurs or, or if you're employed right now, this is leadership training. These are the disciplines that you need for every area of life. And I've created a really consumable video series. And I want to give it to you for free, no strings attached. And I want you to go to GoPro12.com. The link is in the show notes of YouTube or Spotify. GoPro12.com. Go download that. And then I want you to send me a DM after you watch that video series. There's about 10 videos, five minutes a piece, really consumable. And um, I'm really, really excited for you to chew on that and to apply that into your life. And we'll see you guys next week on the Steve. Weatherford Show.